out upon the waters The great unknown Where feet may fail And there I find you in the mystery In oceans deep My faith will stand I will call upon your name and keep my eyes upon the waves when oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace for I am yours and you Sovereign hand will be my guide Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me You never fail and you won't start now So I will call upon your my eyes above the waves when oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace for I am yours and you are mine oh,
Hello everyone. It's the end of May and, and that always means that it's graduation time. Whether it's high school, college, university degrees beyond that, this is a time when students and families celebrate that they've worked towards a goal and have achieved it. It's a huge change, especially for the students and families who are in high school and finishing. Parents have worked with their children for 17 or 18 years. The kids have been in school for 12 years. Everything has sort of been the same year after year after year and then boom in a moment when they get that diploma everything changes. Maybe they go to college, maybe they don't. Maybe they live at home, maybe they don't. Maybe they get a job, maybe they don't. Maybe they strike out on their own, maybe they don't. But everything is different. The relationship between the student and the parent changes so quickly. And for those students who go away, whether it's to college or just move to another place, it's an even bigger change because all of a sudden they're on their own. The house is a little bit more empty than it was before. It's a big time for changes. Uh, you know, churches and other organizations and even individuals have a very tortured relationship with change. A lot of people say they don't like change. A lot of organizations don't like change. I've never believed that. I believe that people like change when it benefits them. I bet you if you had the winning hundred million dollar Powerball ticket that would change your life and you probably wouldn't mind. I think people don't like change when it doesn't benefit them. When they feel like they're being disadvantaged by that change. Well, I want to offer you today a remedy to that, and, and that's this. Ask yourself when there is change, good or bad, but especially when you think that that change is working against you. Ask yourself this question. Is this happening to me or is it happening for me? Is this happening to me? Or is this happening for me? Let me give you an example from Jesus' life. You know, right after he was baptized, we learn that he was cast into the wilderness. And he was there for 40 days. He was hungry. He was thirsty. And the devil came to him and tested him three times. And each of those times, Jesus was up to the task. And eventually, the devil went away. Now, Jesus could have asked himself, why is this happening to me? I was just baptized. Things were good. My, my father sent a dove and said, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. Everything seemed to be going great. And then all of a sudden, in the blink of an eye, he's off in the wilderness struggling. If he had asked himself, why is this happening to me? the whole trajectory of our faith and our experience would be different. Because he would have started acting and making decisions according to, to feeling like a victim, to feeling like God had just dumped all of this garbage right on him. But instead, I imagine that Jesus asked himself, why is this happening for me? Instead, Jesus was asking himself, is this to, to show me some lessons that I need to learn before my ministry? Is this preparing me? Is this a, a kind of test to see how I'll stand up against all of the people who are going to be against me in the future? Is this an opportunity for me to learn how to go without food for a while? <laughs> who knows? But I think Jesus chose that second path. Why is this happening for me? And in that way, and in that question, 
all of the change that was happening to him was reframed, not as a disaster, but as something positive. And I would say that organizations like churches, even whole cities, can ask that same question. For the last couple of years and for at least a couple of more months, we're asking ourselves, what's happening with the change right behind me? We can say, oh, why is this happening? The, the old bridge was just fine. This is such an inconvenience. It's so, such a drag. Or we could say, this is going to modernize our travel. It's going to allow for commerce to get back and forth more easily. It's a more beautiful bridge. Who knows whatever's in your heart. But in things like this, we have to ask ourselves, and at places like our church, for instance, we have to ask ourselves, are these changes happening to us or are these changes happening for us? One thing we know for sure, change can't be changed. <laughs> it's going to happen all the time. But we also know for sure that our perspective on that change makes all the difference. What's in our minds and what's in our hearts can take something that seems like a disaster and potentially be a wonder. But that's up to us. And so folks, especially those of you at Trinity, as we go forward, whether it's with a new youth and family minister, whether it's with new ways to distribute our worship service, whether it's new leaders within our congregation of, uh, of committees or on the council, whatever it might be, we're going to have to ask ourselves all the time, as Jesus did in the wilderness, is this happening to me or is it happening for me? He had the courage to choose the second. He had the courage to look at the challenges with the lens of hope, with the lens of love, and ultimately knowing that God, His Father, and ours had promised promised not to do him poorly, not to lead to his destruction. So, folks, again, as I look behind me, change is afoot. Like this river, it keeps on moving. But it's happening for us. As God said, it's happening for the greater good of all of us. All things, as Paul wrote, work together for the good of those who love the Lord. Do you feel the world is broken? Do you feel the shadows deepen? Do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. Do you wish that you could see it all made new? We do. Is all creation groaning? Is a new creation coming? Yes. Is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst? Yes. Is it good that we remind ourselves of this? Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. 
Is he worthy? Is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy of this? He is. Does the Father truly love us? Does the Spirit move among us? He does. And does Jesus, our Messiah, hold forever those He loves? He does. Does our God intend to dwell again in us? Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. From every people and tribe, every nation and tongue he has made us a kingdom and priest to god to reign with the sun is he worthy is he worthy of our blessing and honor and glory is he worthy is he worthy is he worthy I don't know whether it's a song or a meme or something that's going around, but even my kids have said, Jesus, take the wheel. And uh, it's not bad advice from wherever it, wherever it came from. So with that in mind, let's take a moment for prayer. Lord, in all things we give you thanks. For the wind of the day, for the water that surrounds us, for the sunlight and the rain. Help us to be thoughtful and thankful about all the different changes of the seasons, the changes of nature that happen all around us. We know that the wind is necessary, the water is necessary, the rain, the sun, all of it works together for our good in your vision. We thank you too for change. We, we know that it's constant, that it happens all the time, and just like this mighty river keeps on moving, so does life. And so help us to adapt and to adjust to that change. And help us always to ask, how can this change help? How can this change teach us, help us to learn about your will for us, about your will for this, this world? Help that change not to frighten us because we know that we are in your hand no matter what. Lord, we pray for all of those who are, have and, and are graduating at this time of year. We're thankful for the teachers and the administrators and all, who, all the staff who have helped them get to the place that they are. We thank you for families who have supported students throughout the years. And we ask that you be with them, guide them, inspire them, help them to know that faith and reason, faith and learning are not 
opposed to one another, but partners in a greater search for the truth. Help families especially who are saying goodbye to children as they take big steps on this next path in their lives. And finally, Lord, for our community, things change all the time. We have a new bridge going up. We have new leadership in our cities. We have people moving in and moving out. But help us to always remember to have goodwill for one another, to remember that we live in a community that is not just us alone in our home seeking our own best welfare, but that we share a responsibility for each other. Lord, we pray all of these things, spoken and unspoken, in the name of Jesus, who takes the wheel and guides us. Amen.